It's the land that time forgot, home to some truly incredible landscapes and wildlife and the inspiration for Darwin's theory on evolution. This week on Planet Cruise Weekly, we're looking at cruising the Galapagos. The best way to visit the Galapagos Islands is by cruise ship. There's no doubt about that. And in fact, there are now several cruise lines that offer expedition style cruising to the region. At Silver Sea, Celebrity, G Adventures, Sea Dream and Star Clippers all visit the Galapagos. And whilst you sail through the waters, you will often have the expertise of nature and geology experts giving lectures and leading excursions. There are many species that are unique to the area and you'll be able to take excursions to visit the animals that seem to have no instinctive fear of humans due to the isolated nature of the islands. Plus, you can spend the day in awe and fascination at the animals that are unique to the location and you can do all this travelling in comfort and enjoying the lavish cuisine and service that these ships are renowned for. But before we get into the episode, don't forget to subscribe to get all those updates on when we release a video and hit the bell next to it to receive those notifications. It's really simple. Ding, dong, done. We can tailor make your Galapagos cruise and combine it with a few nights stay pre or post cruise in Ecuador's capital city, Cueto, where we can even book tours of the city so you can make the most of your time there. Now, of course, we've got first-hand professional knowledge of these islands. In fact, if you click the link, you'll see Steve from our video team and some of the vlogs he made whilst traveling on board Celebrity Expedition. If you'd like to book one of these amazing tailor-made once-in-a-lifetime cruises, you can just simply talk to one of our cruise experts over the phone and uh, all you need to do is call the number that you can see right now above. The Galapagos is a year-round destination and nature-loving visitors can expect to be stunned by the flora and fauna in any month they visit. But still, there are two main seasons both of which have their positives and negatives for visiting. Now, high season is considered mid-June to early September and mid-December to mid-January. From June through to November, the Hubbolt current brings colder, nutrient-rich water and slightly cooler temperatures. Now, the change in water quality attracts fish and lots and lots of seabirds, making this a fantastic time to snorkel. Given though the cold or water temperatures, wearing a wetsuit is a smart move for snorkelers hoping to stay in the water longer. This is also the mating season for the blue-footed boobies and the waved albatrosses. December through May and the air and water temperatures are typically warmer, moving into the 30s and in fact the seas are calmer. However, there is light rainfall in short periods every day, but this is balanced with lots more potential sunshine. Every licensed cruise sailing the Galapagos follows a 15-day route established and approved by the Galapagos National Park. During that period, a boat may not visit the same site twice, with the exception of the Charles Darwin Research Station on Santa Cruz. Now, how lines segment the 15 days can vary, but four, five and eight day options are the norm and passengers can often combine these segments into a seven to 11 day cruise. Now, it's important to note that all cruises follow the same protocol regardless of the itinerary. Island visits and water-based activities are done during the day and the majority of the navigation is done overnight. Some of the itineraries might differ slightly, but in general, there are two uh, different types of itinerary that the cruises do around the 13 major and six smaller islands of Galapagos. And these are called the inner loop and the outer loop, which in essence is a loop around the inside or the outside of the Galapagos Islands. The first unique port, part of the outer loop, will be Ghana Bay, which is part of what they call Espanola Island. Now, a long white sand beach and clear blue waters make this an ideal spot for swimming and snorkeling or just relaxing on the beach. In the water, sea turtles, rays, colorful tropical fish, and maybe even a white tip reef shark may be seen. It's also home to a wonderful colony of sea lions. And funnily enough, Floriana was the first capital of the Galapagos and where Charles Darwin met the island's governor. 
Its small, brackish lagoon is often home to flamingos, stilts, and white-cheeked pintail ducks. And one of its beaches is highly used for uh, sea turtles for nesting. Now check out the green-hued sand where you land and nearby what's called Champion Island, which lies just east of Floriana and provides a wonderful opportunity for snorkeling and a zodiac ride. Now here, we do recommend snorkeling. And if you do go and snorkel, tropical fish abound with frequent sightings of sea turtles, rays, sharks, sea stars, and much, much more. Sea lions can sometimes uh, be seen uh, in a very, very playful mood, having fun. And during a zodiac ride along the rocky shoreline, make sure you keep a, an eye out for seabirds, such as the boobies, pelicans, and the frigate birds. Now sticking with Floriana Island is Post Office Bay and this really is a very interesting stop. Loads of history here because it's, it's home to the Post Office Barrel which was established in around 1793 and this is where unbelievably pirates and buccaneers, whalers and others could leave their mail to be picked up by other outbound ships. It's bizarre thinking of about a pirate sending mail, you know, Blackbeard sending home a postcard. Now the tradition, funnily enough, still continues today. As visitors leave, they sift through the mail and collect letters going to a home near their final destination or on the way to their destination. And then they preferably hand deliver the letters to the recipients. In fact, tour guides are known to say that slapping a stamp on the letter and dropping it in a mailbox is cheating. And in keeping with the tradition, a hand delivered letter is always a bit more special. So if you do go out to the Galapagos, make sure you have a sift through and take any letters home that are near you. Next up, Isabella Island and Marino Point. And along this beautiful rocky shore, a field of hardened black lava flows and is pot-marked by shallow pools, which are home to shorebirds and flamingos. The mangrove lined shore also provides a chance to see marine iguanas, sea turtles, stingrays, sharks, penguins, and that wonderful flightless cormorant. Also on Isabella Island is Uvana Bay, composed of five coalesced volcanoes. This is the largest island in the Galapagos and the most recently active, the latest eruption having occurred in 2009. Here you'll see large uh, iguanas, finches, and if you're lucky, a giant tortoise or two. In 1954, the intrusion of magma below one of the island volcanoes caused part of the bay to be lifted by some six meters. And today you can walk through the remains of what was once a thriving underwater reef. Next up, Fernandinha Island and Espinosa Point. Now, Fernandinha is the youngest island in the Galapagos and as Charles Darwin wrote, it is covered with immense deluges of black naked lava. Along with its extraordinary black lava rocks, uh, this point of land hosts the largest colony of marine iguanas in the archipelago, along with sea lions and a nesting site for those cormorants. And the final destination on Isabella Island is Vincente Rocca Point. The half collapsed remains of an ancient volcano make for a spectacular setting at this site. Awe inspiring cliffs, blue waters, and wildlife create a zodiac ride which you will always remember as you get to search for sea turtles and penguins and fur seals, the flightless cormorant, marine iguanas, marine mammals, and the oddly shaped elusive sunfish. Next up, South Plaza. Now it's one of two islands off Santa Cruz and was created uh, through an uplifting of geological activity. The rocky island is strewn with prickly pear cactus and home to land iguanas, marine iguanas, and a colony of sea lions. Now this is a satellite volcanic cone located north of Santa Cruz Island. The crater flora is an important breeding site for the aforementioned blue-footed boobies. This island is famous for the scientific investigation led by Peter and Rosemary Grant on the finches population, one of the most important studies on the field that supports the Charles Darwin theory. It's a small island south of Santiago, and Rabida is best known for its red sand and eroded volcanic landscape. If you did hear me right, red sand, it's brilliant. A nesting colony of pelicans makes its home here, along with sea lions and some seabirds.
Next on the inner loop, Elizabeth Bay, which is on Isabella Island. Uh, and it's one of the most western points in the Galapagos. A scenic zodiac ride along the sheltered inlets offers viewing to a wide variety of wildlife and its fantastic mangrove ecosystem. You'll also hopefully get a chance to visit Sullivan Bay in Santiago Island. During a volcanic eruption in the early 1900s, this area of Santiago was covered with flowing lava. Today, the hardened fields of black rock create a geologic wonderland. Then there's Bartolome Island, and of course pronunciation of Bartolome Island does uh, differ depending on who says it. Um, and it hosts a moonlight volcanic landscape, uh, spatter cones and pinnacle rocks, which make for a really unique stop. It's also home to the endemic Galapagos penguin and provides an excellent opportunity for snorkeling. Las Bacas which is part of Santa Cruz Island, is one of the most beautiful white sand beaches in all of the Galapagos. And behind it are two small ponds that often have flamingos feeding in the shallows. It's also home to one of the largest nesting areas for the famous Pacific Green Sea Turtle. Still sticking with the inner circle, we have North Seymour Island, which is a small island just north of Boltra. It's home to the largest colony of frigate birds in the Galapagos. And whilst keeping an eye out for male frigates trying to impress their potential mates with a, an inflated red neck pouch, uh, I wish I could do that, you may also see blue-footed boobies dancing in a timeless courtship ritual. Sea lions and large land iguanas also roam about this tremendously rocky terrain. Juanto Pit, which also is on San Cristobal Island, and allows you the rare opportunity to visit the only location in the Galapagos where you can observe all three species of boobies, blue, red, and masked, plus two species of frigate birds nesting in the same area. In addition, there's an opportunity to explore its volcanic terrain as well as its beach swimming. Finally, for the inner loop, Santa Cruz Island and uh, what's called Puerto Ayora. Now, this is the main population centre of the islands and home to the National Park Service, uh, Tortoise Breeding Centre and the Charles Darwin Research Station. Now, you'll be able to visit the Tortoise Breeding Centre and walk through the Charles Darwin Research Station. You'll also have the opportunity to observe giant tortoises in the wild and walk through a lava tunnel. Now, it's worth noting that Galapagos cruises are often paired with land-based visits to Peru's Manu Picchu, uh, the Ecuadorian rainforest, or other South American hotspots. And most passengers will spend at least a day or two exploring Cueto pre or post cruise. So, some tips. First one is to bring an underwater camera, similar to a GoPro, uh, as well as a camera which has a good zoom. The Galapagos really is a once in a lifetime destination and to truly capture it, you'll need a camera uh, with which you can really get up close to the animals, which give you some amazing opportunities. Um, I know when we went there, Planet Cruise recently through Steve, there were other passengers that only had uh, their cameras on their phone. And yeah, okay, phone cameras are good, generally if you don't have to use the zoom too much but as soon as you start using the zoom that's when it really really shows up. Now another one of our tips is make sure that you attend the lectures. We did mention this earlier but it's such a great addition it really is worth going into more detail. Each night on your cruise there will be lectures held in the main, in the main lounge and this really is the best way to discover what you can see and what you're gonna do the following day. And again, we just highly recommend you go to them, no matter how tired you may feel, even if you fall asleep during it, you'll pick up something which you can use the next day. There's so much we couldn't even mention about the Galapagos in this episode. And if you're lucky enough to ever travel there, uh, you'll see why we say that because there's literally so much to see, so much to do. Um, so if you're interested, all you do is click the link above um, to see some of the deals that we have, or of course you can go to our website, or alternatively, give us a call on the phone number on the screen and speak to one of our cruise experts here at Planet Cruise. 
Now, of course, for us to keep making content like this, we need you to help us. So please do like this video, please do share this video, let your friends know about what you think about our video content, get involved in the discussion, comment below, um, and we really do thank you for doing that and for getting involved and just for watching. Remember, you dream it, we plan it. Hi everyone, thanks very much for watching the video. Please don't forget to comment and subscribe below and remember to click the bell to get those notifications turned on. And if you're looking for more fantastic travel content like this, then click on the videos to the right. It will be really, really informative. Or you can click on the Planet logo to the left and go to our website for some really fantastic goods. Thanks for watching.